morning. Good morning. I've been coming to St. Francis almost all my life. I've heard many fathers and mothers day reflections, and as a kid I loved them. With no offense to you, Father Hoffman, I loved them because they made church appear to go by faster. <laughs> and as fate may have it, I am privileged to create that illusion for the children here today. You've probably seen my family and I sitting there at 1030 Mass for nearly three decades. You may have seen my parents and wondered what it would be like to raise a child with such a severe physical disability. Both of my parents could share thousands of hours of stories of how our family had to band together, brother and sister, husband and wife, parents and children, to triumph over our challenges. And while I'm grateful for the connection to my sister Heidi and mother Gloria, Today, I shall focus my appreciation on my father, Greg. If I had a dollar for every person that said to me, I wish my dad and I were that close, well, I'd have enough money to find new vows. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, what I have with my dad is priceless. In the Gospel today, Jesus said, Who do the crowds say that I am? Then numerous titles were spouted on John the Baptist, Elijah, the Prophet. Jesus then turned the tables and asked, But who do you say that I am? This portion really moved me because it had me realize there's always two sides to a person. The public persona and then the private life. Now we all know God sees both sides. And while I'm not a man of the cloth, I can tell you I believe God cares far more about who we are in private. Today I would like to share a few of the glorious elements I've observed in my father's private life that has inspired me to be a better man. I certainly have the foundational principles in place because of the tremendous example he has set for me. Dad, because of you, I realize that a man's career can never pay him enough to outrank his commitment to his family. You see, when I entered junior high, my parents felt that little boys would bond better to me if mommy wasn't always hovering around. They felt that it would be stronger for my development as a young man to have a male influence at home, helping me with all my daily needs and taking me to social events. So my father decided to forego a successful career as a stockbroker and become Mr. Mom, while well, my mother became the family income earner. Our lives shifted dramatically. Our family income changed, and my father no longer carried with him the identity of being a stockbroker and a financial provider. As difficult as that was for him, not a single day passed when my father ever made me feel guilty for his decision. On the contrary, he taught me that as a father, your decisions aren't about what's best for self, rather for your wife and children. In a nation filled with absent fathers, and emotionally vacant fathers who are tethered to their jobs. I most certainly thank God for being born into my family. Dad, because of you, I realize a father can teach his children and yet still be open to learn from them. My dad and I have spent hundreds of hours, maybe even thousands of hours, in deep discussion about politics, religion, economics, what's right and what's wrong. Our most cherished talks take place in the driveway. We'd sit in the car after returning home from our weekly dinner and a movie, and 
be consumed by the need to verbally solve all of the problems in the world. You see, if I'm, if I'm not happy, my dad will pester me until he finds out why. <laughs> I've shed many tears in his arms while asking difficult questions throughout my life. Daddy, why can't I play basketball? Dad, why don't the girls want to beat me? Dad, how are we going to grow our business this quarter? The beautiful thing about my dad is, even if he doesn't know the answer, his opinions are so convincing, you'd swear they were facts. <laughs> In my house, we have a name for them. They're called OPACs, Opinionated Facts. <laughs> I certainly have enough knowledge to give him a run for those OPACs. And as opinionated as he is, I am so grateful for his willingness to learn from me. Dad, because of you I realize a father can be respectful and also show his emotions. Anyone who has ever spied on the Stevenson house knows we are not quiet when we are upset. However, those spies will also know that arguments never turn personal. They fixate on the event and the hurt feelings and avoid any personal jabs for its character, intelligence, or ability. My father taught me to fight for what's right, but fight clean 